happening this morning. Albuquerque voters are one step closer to being able to decide if pot penalties should be reduced in the city. The Albuquerque City Council says voters should get a say in this, but that does not necessarily mean it'll happen. Last night, the city council voted five to four to put the reduced pot penalties on the ballot. The vote was along party lines with Democrats voting for it. But now the mayor, who is a Republican, still has to approve it. In the past, he has said he is not in favor of this. The plan is for people with an ounce of pot or less to get just a $25 fine and not go to jail. We'll let you know what the mayor decides. And it does look like people in Santa Fe will get to vote on reducing pot penalties there. Supporters submitted nearly 11,000 signatures for a petition to do that, and the city clerk says enough are valid to get the issue on the ballot. If it passes, anyone caught with an ounce or less of marijuana would be considered low priority for Santa Fe police, would get a $25 fine, and would not go to jail. So now the city council can either vote on the potential rules or just simply put it on the ballot. In Albuquerque, a tax increase to fund programs to help people struggling with mental illness and addiction could also go before the voters. City councilors did pass that measure in a 5-4 to four vote last night. This also needs to go before Mayor R.J. Berry before officially getting on the ballot. The group that's supposed to police Albuquerque's police department is no more, at least for now. The city council voted to suspend the police oversight commission until a new one is created. It's not a huge development as most of the people on the commission had quit recently. So for now, the city's independent review officer will investigate complaints against police. We had 533 from the papers this morning. Albuquerque Police Chief Gordon Eden says he needs more money to hire more officers to make the city safer. Right now, APD has about 905 officers, and Chief Eden's goal is to have about 1,000. But in the Albuquerque Journal this morning, Mr. Eden says he'll probably have to delay the next class at the academy until January because the department does not have enough money. The class in the academy right now has about 40 cadets in it. The next one is set to have 20. Together, they would bring the total number of officers in APD to about 965, still less than what the chief would like eventually. Council President Ken Sanchez says Chief Eden should have told the council about the money issues in the spring when the budget was created. Other councilors say they'll try to find a way to fix the issue. It looks like a big bike loop could soon become a reality here in Albuquerque. The 50-mile activity loop is part of the mayor's project called ABQ The Plan. The goal is to upgrade the infrastructure the city already has and fill in gaps and bike trails to create a 50-mile biking, running, and walking loop all around the city. The city says the design could be done by next month. Then it will go to the Municipal Development Department for construction. One of the challenges with this project is designing something for everybody. People have different skill levels, whether a cyclist or a walker or a, a child or walking their dog. But um, generally speaking, people have supported this idea. And you can find out more about the project and give your thoughts on it tomorrow night at 5 at the Jerry Klein Tennis Center on Louisiana and Constitution. Well, APS could have an interim superintendent by the end of this week. We now know the school board's having three meetings this week to talk about this. On Wednesday, it will talk about what qualifications an interim superintendent should have and what the expectations of the position will be. Then on Thursday and Friday, the board is set to go into a private meeting to talk about who could take on this role. The board hasn't said exactly who it is considering right now. In the meantime, District's Chief Operations Officer Ruben Hend Hendrickson is the acting superintendent. Winston Brooks stepped down Friday and the board unanimously approved his resignation, but no one is saying exactly why. A criminal investigation is now underway by the Cibola County Sheriff after a riot broke out at the Cibola County Jail. Three corrections officers were attacked during the uprising that started Sunday night. Jail guards were able to get things under control fairly quickly. The facility holds about 230 inmates. There was 50 to 75 thousand dollars in damages done to this detention center. The former police chief accused of raping a young woman has pleaded not guilty. Shane Harder, the former Hemis police chief, is charged with kidnapping, rape and extortion in connection with a traffic stop in January. That's when he's accused of detaining an 18 year old woman, raping her and threatening her if she told anyone. Harker was fired by the village council in February, just days after another incident here at the Sunport. He was trying to fly with IDs with two different names and got mouthy with Sunport police when they questioned him about this. Prosecutors brought up that incident in court, saying he's a flight risk. 
and he did have two different sets of ID, which is a concern to the state. When this case was being investigated by the New Mexico State Police, he falsely told the state police that he had been advised by two uh, prosecutors from our office to, in fact, uh, obtain uh, an alias, which was not true. The judge set Harger's bond at $250,000. He's now in the Sandoval County Detention Center, away from other inmates because of his ties to law enforcement. Well, it's hard for emergency crews to see people dying when they respond to a crime scene. And a new pilot program that's never been done in New Mexico before is hoping to change this and save lives. Got a victim inside? Yeah, I got shot in the arm. You got one more patient up here? Well, it's law enforcement's job to stop the threat at a scene, such as a shooting. That would be the person with the gun. Paramedics want to help those who are hurt right away, but they're often kept away when there is still a dangerous situation. On special assignment last night, we showed you how Bernalillo County firefighters are training with paramedics to go in together. The shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School in 2012, where a man with a gun shot 20 kids and six adults, really solidified the need for this training. We're standing back while people are while people are dying, and especially while children are dying. That's sort of really hard to swallow. Moving. Very much so is. There's much more to this story, including how the money was secured and how the program could be expanded. You want to find out about it? Go check out the story anytime at krqe.com or watch it tonight at 9 o'clock on Tucaso.